Is that Jesus Christ? Please. Please, our Father God. Mom, es un hombre. Es un hombre. Jerusalem is a city under siege and not for the first time. From stories in the Bible to you, Nen resolutions. This is a city forged in conflict. For many, this is a deja vu moment. It reminds them of the deadly Gaza war last year. Have you ever seen something strange in the sky? Lately, there have been reports of unusual sightings over Jerusalem, sparking debates and questions. People are wondering if these are just interesting clouds or signs from something much bigger. Could they be angels or even a message from God about the return of Jesus Christ? The Bible talks about signs in the sky before the second coming, and many people believe these sightings could be those signs. If you are also curious about these things, then stay tuned till the end. In Jerusalem today, something remarkable unfolded in the sky, sparking curiosity and speculation across Israel. As believers ponder biblical teachings about Jesus Christ's primest return, recent events like Middle East conflicts and natural disasters in Mecca seem to align with ancient prophecies. Discussions about rebuilding the Third Temple have also stirred interest. Throughout history, angelic appearances have been seen as signs of divine intervention during times of turmoil. Could these celestial sightings indicate God's presence amid our chaotic world? Lately, the skies above us have become a spectacle of strange sightings, leaving people everywhere buzzing with curiosity. Some claim to have seen clouds resembling angels, while others speak of encounters with beings beyond our world. And then, there's the unforgettable moment, when a colossal figure appeared, mistaken by some as a visitation from Jesus himself. These sightings have sparked intense debate, with many searching for answers. As we discuss these mysteries, we're reminded of the ancient words of the Bible, particularly Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? And of the end of the world, where Jesus' disciples inquire about signs preceding his return. These signs in the sky, mentioned in the passage, are closely linked to biblical prophecy prompting many to draw parallels between these sightings and the teachings of the Bible. The Bible vividly warns those who overlook the signs of Christ's return to prepare themselves for the surprise of His coming. However, amid this uncertainty, there's hope for those who remain faithful. Luke chapter 21 verse 28 And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh assures believers that when they see these signs, they should lift their heads with anticipation because their redemption is near. Jesus encourages believers to stand firm, promising deliverance from God's impending judgment to those who recognize these divine signals. Let's not just marvel at the amazing things we see in the sky, but let's also be ready because our redemption is closer than we might realize. The Bible tells us it's crucial to stay alert and pay attention to the signs around us. So let's dive into the scriptures and learn about angels and how they signal God's return. Angels aren't just abstract ideas, they're real spiritual beings with intelligence, emotions, and will. They can take on physical forms when needed, even though they don't have bodies like ours. Despite their wisdom, angels don't know everything like God does. They were created as higher beings than humans and have been watching over us for a long time, learning from what they see. Angels don't learn like we do, they don't need history books. Instead, they watch things happen directly giving them a special view of what's going on in line with God's plan. This makes them different from us because they understand God's big picture in a unique way. Because angels have been observing humans for so long, they can predict how we'll behave pretty accurately. Their insight comes from first-hand observation, not from reading about it in books. Angels have their own wills, but they still follow God's orders. Good angels are sent by God to help believers. And they're a different kind of being from humans. Contrary to what some may think, humans don't become angels when they die, and angels were never human. They're a unique creation by God. The Bible describes angels as magnificent beings, like Gabriel and Daniel's vision with a shining face and eyes like fire. Even the angel at Christ's tomb had a radiant appearance. These stories show that angels are real, not just made up. In ancient times, angel sightings were rare, but nowadays there's growing interest in them. People report encounters with angels who often appear as mysterious strangers bringing peace and comfort. Sometimes they're seen as winged or dressed in white, leaving people feeling a connection to something divine. 
These encounters remind us that angels play important roles in different faiths, continuing to capture our imagination and interest. Those who witness angelic visitations often emerge from these encounters, feeling deeply reassured of God's existence, enveloped in a profound sense of peace. Despite the mysterious nature of these experiences, they create a profound connection to the divine, reminiscent of the angelic choir that announced Jesus' birth in Luke chapter 2, verse 13. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, some individuals even report choir-like experiences in places of worship, although these encounters may not convey specific messages. Instead, they, they evoke spiritual joy and comfort, heightening one's sense of the sacred. Another common type of angelic visitation involves feeling physical sensations, like being embraced by gentle wings or arms. A comforting experience, especially for elderly individuals feeling alone. These encounters highlight God's role as the ultimate source of comfort, echoing scriptural mentions of God's protective wings. Such experiences demonstrate that God and angels are actively present in our world, strengthening believers' faith in God's help and the comforting presence of heavenly beings. When people have encounters with angels, it's like a special moment where they feel God's presence deeply, and it fills them with a sense of peace that's hard to describe. Even though these experiences are kind of mysterious and hard to understand, they make us feel like we're connected to something really important and divine. Kind of like when the angels sang to announce Jesus' birth. Some people even feel like they're surrounded by angelic choirs when they're in places of worship, which makes them feel really happy and at peace. Another way angels visit us is by making us feel like we're being hugged by something really gentle, like soft wings or arms wrapping around us. This feeling is especially nice for older people who might be feeling a bit lonely. These kinds of experiences remind us that God is always there for us, protecting us like a big, comforting wing, and that angels are watching over us, looking out for us in our everyday lives. It's moments like these that help us believe in God's help and feel the comforting presence of heavenly beings all around us. These encounters with angels serve as poignant reminders of God's comforting presence in our lives, offering solace in times of need. They also prompt us to recognize and appreciate the comforting presence of God's angels, who watch over us with care and protection. However, it's essential to remain vigilant and discerning. As the scriptures warn us about the existence of fallen angels, aligned with Satan, who aim to undermine and harm God's people. This highlights the importance of spiritual discernment and staying alert to the dangers posed by spiritual deception. Yet, despite these challenges, we find assurance in Jesus' promise of enduring presence and protection. His support surpasses even the strength and reassurance offered by celestial beings. As we navigate through life's uncertainties, we can find comfort in knowing that Jesus is always by our side, guiding and protecting us through every circumstance. Biblical Prophecy As conveyed by Jesus and the Apostle John, sheds light on the supernatural signs that will herald the culmination of the end times. These signs, such as the darkening of the sun, falling stars and celestial disturbances serve as divine warnings of God's ultimate plan for redemption and judgment. The imagery depicted in the sixth seal of Revelation paints a vivid picture of impending divine wrath, with catastrophic events like massive earthquakes and the darkening of celestial bodies. People from all walks of life, from kings to slaves, seek refuge, hoping to escape the divine punishment looming over the earth. Throughout history, humans have been captivated by celestial events, often interpreting them as messages from a higher power. While eclipses and comets were once feared as omens, modern science has provided explanations for these phenomena. However, in today's world, where we have unraveled the mysteries of the skies and can predict astronomical events with precision, the fulfillment of biblical prophecies might require something truly extraordinary to capture our attention. Consider Christ's predictions of spectacular celestial displays. These could serve as the unmistakable signs we've been awaiting, signaling divine intervention and the nearing of Judgment Day. When Jesus spoke of these supernatural signs in the sky, he drew upon a rich tapestry of prophecies from the Old Testament. The imagery he invoked of the sun darkening, stars falling, and heavens shaking was deeply rooted in prophetic literature. These recurring themes of cataclysmic events are all connected to what's called the Day of the Lord. Take Isaiah, for instance, he vividly describes a day when human arrogance will be brought low, leaving only God standing tall. These prophecies aren't just about doom and gloom, 
their warnings about the dangers of pride and the importance of humility before our Creator. Let's face it, human pride can be a stubborn obstacle when it comes to connecting with God. Sometimes it takes a major shake-up to wake us from our self-centered slumber. That's where divine intervention comes in. By shaking the very foundations of our world, God reminds us of our vulnerability and our need to humble ourselves before Him. So, when you witness the heavens trembling and the earth shaking, don't just brush it off as a cosmic coincidence. Take it as a cue to refocus your gaze and realign your priorities. Because in the end, it's all about recognizing our place in the grand scheme of things and acknowledging the power and majesty of the one who holds it all together. Within all the chaos and unusual signs in the sky, people will come to realize the futility of their pursuits and obsessions, and I'm not just referring to traditional idols like statues, but also to the modern-day idols we chase after, like wealth, fame, and material possessions. The Apostle Paul foresaw this, likening our modern fixation on materialism and indulgence to the idol worship condemned in the Bible. When the upheaval hits, it will reveal the emptiness of accumulating possessions for the sake of it. Isaiah vividly describes what will happen on Judgment Day. The sky will darken, and even the stars and moon will lose their brilliance. It's as if the universe itself is preparing for a grand reckoning. Ezekiel adds to this by describing more signs in the sky, more darkness and gloom, all consequences of human arrogance and sin. These cosmic events are meant to jolt us awake, serving as God's way of saying, hey, stop chasing after all these material things. It's a wake-up call to reassess our priorities and recognize the transient nature of worldly pursuits in the face of divine judgment. So, in the chaos, we're called to reflect on what truly matters. Instead of being consumed by the pursuit of temporary pleasures, we're encouraged to seek spiritual fulfillment and a deeper connection with the divine. These cosmic upheavals remind us of our vulnerability and the limitations of our earthly existence. They urge us to shift our focus from the transient to the eternal and to find solace in a higher purpose beyond material wealth and earthly desires. In the pages of the Bible, the darkness isn't just a tale from ancient times, it's a powerful symbol of God shaking things up to grab our attention. These celestial signs, like the darkening of the sun and moon, serve as a wake-up call, preparing us for the return of Jesus and the establishment of His kingdom. God wants us to recognize our sins, whether it's pride, greed, or placing material things above Him, so we can turn around and reconcile with Him. While the thought of God's anger may seem daunting, it's all part of His plan to set things right and demonstrate His love and justice simultaneously. Jesus Himself drew parallels between our times and the days of Noah, when people were consumed by wickedness and ignored warnings. Ultimately, when God had had enough, He sent a fluid to cleanse the world. God doesn't delight in our suffering. Rather, He can't bear to see us harm ourselves any longer. When we witness chaos unfolding around us, it's a signal to pause and reflect on what truly holds significance. God is attempting to communicate with us, even if it requires disrupting the status quo. In the book of Revelation, a remarkable scene unfolds as the Lamb breaks the first of seven seals. The world seems to hold its breath, awaiting the next moment. The souls of martyrs cry out for justice, pleading against the injustices and oppressions rampant on earth. God's anger, though just, is tempered with love and truth. His judgment springs from a deep desire to confront the corruption and morale decay plowing humanity. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 24, verses 37 to 39, draws a poignant comparison to the days of Noah. It was a time of immense wickedness, with humanity sinking deeper into corruption and evil with each passing day. As God surveyed the world, his heart weighed heavy with sadness at the extent of human depravity. Despite numerous warnings and signs, people remained oblivious to the impending judgment. Witnessing humanity's relentless spiral into sin, God's heart brimmed with sorrow and regret for having created mankind. The catastrophic flood served as a response to humanity's unrepentant wickedness, serving as a stark reminder of the consequences of rebellion against God. As our Creator and Father, God grieves to see His children on the path of self-destruction. Yet, He is not. Even amid these solemn truths, there lies a message of hope. God's judgment is not born out of vindictiveness, but stems from a deep desire to bring about redemption and restoration. Through His love and grace, He extends the opportunity for repentance and reconciliation, urging us to turn away from sin and return to Him. As we go in the deep seas of life, 
Let us heed the signs around us and realign our hearts with God's will. Let us recognize the urgency of the moment and embrace the opportunity for renewal and transformation. For in acknowledging our faults and seeking forgiveness, we open the door to a future filled with hope, guided by the love and mercy of our Heavenly Father. There are moments when God's sorrow transforms into righteous anger, compelling Him to take decisive action. His love, though powerful, demands tough love when necessary. Throughout history, we've witnessed instances of God's tough love in action, such as the flood during Noah's time and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. These events underscore God's unwavering commitment to addressing sin and evil through necessary measures. Sin, inherently opposed to God's nature, has wrought immense suffering and evil upon the world. Therefore, God's actions aim to counter these consequences and guide humanity back to righteousness. The eradication of sin is crucial for the establishment of God's kingdom, where true peace and happiness reign and all traces of sorrow and suffering are comforted. The urgency of watching and remaining faithful, as emphasized in Revelation chapter 16, highlights the importance of vigilance and faithfulness. The impending seven plagues before Christ's second coming require believers to remain vigilant and uphold spiritual integrity symbolized by faithful garments. The metaphor of Christ coming as a thief underscores the unexpected nature of these events, urging readiness. Though God's interventions may seem stern, their purpose is to usher in a sin-free kingdom where his ways prevail. The call to watch and remain faithful serves as a beacon of hope, signaling the eventual establishment of a kingdom characterized by genuine peace and eternal joy. In Revelation, those who remain spiritually faithful are depicted as adorned in white robes, symbolizing purity through the cleansing power of Jesus Christ's blood. This imagery underscores the importance of maintaining spiritual vigilance amidst the tumultuous events of the end times. When Christ speaks of being blessed for watching, Revelation chapter 16 verse 15 says, Behold, I come as a thief, blessed is he who watches. This reminder encourages believers to remain steadfast in their faith and vigilant in their spiritual journey, knowing that their perseverance will ultimately lead to blessings and eternal reward. Staying watchful and keeping our spiritual garments signifies more than just observing celestial signs. It involves being aware of global events and guarding against religious deception. Angels play a significant role in Christ's return, as foretold in Scripture. According to Matthew chapter 25, verse 31, when the Son of Man returns in glory, He will be accompanied by all the angels. This signifies not only their presence, but also their active participation in this momentous event. For devout believers, the return of Jesus Christ holds the promise of ultimate fulfillment and divine reunion. As the moment approaches, believers are urged to remain vigilant, adorned with the garments of spiritual loyalty and prepared for His imminent arrival. In Revelation chapter 5, a heavenly scene unfolds vividly, with angels encircling the throne of the Lamb, Jesus Christ engaging in perpetual worship. Their united chorus proclaims, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain affirming His supremacy and offering Him honor, glory, and blessing. Do you believe in God? Let us know your views on these incidents in the comments section below, and if you like this video then do give it a big thumbs up.